Welcome back, everyone. Our next speaker is Joseph Wang of Crypto HW Wallet. Joseph is going to be talking about the advantages of cryptocurrency hard wallets today. Everybody, welcome, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What an amazing uh, support from all of you guys as a full house. I was so surprised. Earlier, like 15, 20 minutes ago, I stopped by. I came in. Half the room was uh, was empty. I thought nobody was interested in this topic, but I'm so glad that you all uh, made it here today. Uh, I promise I will try to share some of the most valuable information. Oh. Okay. Is it better now? I'll try to stretch my voice a little bit more. No? I have to I have to shout. <laughs> is it better now? This is fine. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that All right. So I'm going to do um a l quick uh, survey, a little survey, and so I can kind of like gauge where I should uh, cons uh, focus on my on my on my topic, uh, especially on um, related to hardware wallet. How many of you here actually own cryptocurrencies? What? Oh, I like that. <laughs> and how many of you actually have hardware wallets? Very good. Um, oh, that's really really good. How many of you guys have heard of us, Crypto HW Wallet? Wow. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you so much. I, I'm, uh, I'm fascinated and really um, happy and excited to see uh, I, even this crowd, there are actually people have actually heard about us. We are uh, really uh, active in the space. Um, myself have been involved with cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin, since 2014. So I'll give a brief introduction about how I came about to this space. So I uh, went to a CES show in Las Vegas uh, in 2014. Uh, BitPay had a booth. Uh, they had um, uh, basically, they were there uh, introducing to the crowd about Bit Bitcoin. And I was lucky enough to get $5 worth of Bitcoin. They asked me to download a Bitcoin or a blockchain.info wallet. That was the first wallet I used. It's a mobile wallet. It's still very popular today. It's one of the most popular wallets. And ever since I encountered Bitcoin in 2014, I became extremely interested in this technology. And I've always been uh, interested in financing and uh, investment. I've been a very active investor in real estate, in, in businesses, in precious metals. And I know a lot of people that love precious metals uh, like the fact that cryptocurrency mimic that type of character. So... To a year later, I lost some of my Bitcoins through an exchange. That's when it started me um, to look, or in, it drove me to look deeper into how to secure my Bitcoins, how not to lose my Bitcoins. And then I came across with Trezor. Um, and Trezor turns out to be an extremely powerful device. Uh, I learned uh, inside out and how it works, kind of uh, maybe not to the extreme technical part, but I read a lot of things about Trezor, and then I uh, started using Trezor. Um, um, while I was doing that, um, I've been selling products online, mostly electronics. So I had this idea. I said I should try to uh, get all the other crypto investors um, to know and to use this device. This is really powerful, so I don't want other people to go through the pain that I went through. I lost about six and a half bitcoins. Back in the days, it was a few thousand dollars. Today, you can imagine the sixty, seventy thousand dollars because I just checked it's uh, ten thousand dollars per Bitcoin. Uh, that's with, without counting all the forks, all the Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, all the other ones. If you actually total that, it's close to a hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. So I hope today, after you attend this conference, you learn something valuable. You take it home with you, share with your friends, um, whoever are investing in cryptocurrency. I will definitely provide you one of the best tools. So since you guys already own Bitcoins uh, and cryptocurrencies, I'm not going to go to the details of uh, how you know uh, Bitcoin works and all that stuff. But I want to touch the basics that any cryptocurrency involves with some kind of digitized token. That token is virtual. You can't touch. You can't feel it. It's just the digital number shown on, this, on the screen on the computer. But it's somewhere out there in existence in some form of bits, zeros, and ones. So it re it's really prone to some kind of hack hacks uh, to especially sophisticated hackers. Because when these digital tokens, if they are staying on the cloud, they can be vulnerable. 
uh, as we all know that uh, each uh, Bitcoin public address is associated with a private address. Every time when you generate a receiving Bitcoin address, there's always a private address behind that. So the purpose of this hardware wallet is to secure that private key. Whoever owns the private key owns the coins. Bitcoin doesn't recognize owners, it only recognizes the access control of the private key. So the hardware wallet plays that role. What makes a hardware wallet special or unique um, is what I'm going to talk about as I go into further in the, in the slide. To me, Bitcoin is really, really revolutionary, it's really, really the future. It has changed a lot of people's lives. It has changed mine. We receive a lot of negative publicity in terms of uh, that Bitcoin is drug money. This is what uh, terrorists are using to, to laundry uh, money and then uh, to move uh, resources to fund their terrorist activities. That, but that's what really the media like to talk about, to draw attention, to draw eyeballs for you guys to read. But look what Bitcoin has done to me. It has turned my business from almost dying into a full-blown business. We just opened a new office in Shenzhen. We're going to hire at least 10 people there. We have an office here in Southern California, uh, not here, but uh, in the States, uh, Los Angeles, uh, in Southern California. Then we expand another office because we need to hire more people to expand our, our operations. So even though Bitcoin is virtual currency or cryptocurrency, but it is actually is fostering real economy. It's driving real growth in our economy, in our society. It's creating jobs. I'm able to hire these people to feed their families because they are able to earn an income for what they're trying to do for me to serve you guys. When you guys purchase a wallet, there's a lot of process going through that. So they're helping me to facilitate that activity by earning an income. So as you can see, virtual economy is moving, driving a real economy. So let me go into uh, what we do. So obviously, you know, we are um, crypto .com is a one-stop crypto hardware wallet superstore. The reason we call us, uh, ourselves as a crypto hardware wallet superstore is because we carry all the wallets that's available on the market that are credible. There are more than what we carry, but there are four brands. If you go to bitcoin.org, you will find four brands that are certified. We only carry certified wallets. We want to act as a, um, a good source of information, watch what wallets we carry, what wallets we sell, so you guys feel secure that we're selling you a decent and sound product. Uh, I found this company last year, 2016, around uh, February. I reserved the domain and I launched the website in April. And we specialize um, on the hardware wallet accessories and wallet itself. So the accessories is branded under Crypto HIV Wallet. And I'll, I'll share a story uh, with you on that a little, a little bit later. But uh, we are definitely an authorized dealer. We're the largest reseller currently for all the wallets that you see here. Trezor, Ledger, Digital Bitbox, and KeepKey. I just stopped by uh, ShapeShift. Uh, they are the current owner of Keep, uh, KeepKey. And I spoke to uh, the lady. She said, oh, we just received a large order. Uh, they actually wiped this out. That was us. We purchased 4,000 units from them. They couldn't fill the orders. They have to fill it separately. So we are trying to store a lot of inventory in our warehouse so we can always fill these orders. Even though as hard as we try, we have been out of stock uh, many, many months last year, especially on Ledger product. Well, Ledger is out on themselves, so we don't have any. So hopefully our goal this year is not to run out again after they, they, uh, they replenish uh, their inventory. We're going to try to, we're trying to secure more fund and trying to, uh, be able to obtain more inventory. So you see our products, all these leather accessories uh, we created under the brand Crypto HW Wallet. When I got a Ledger Blue, the one in the middle right here, I don't know if, uh, if this one looked like a foam. Um, when I start using that wallet, it's really big, it, uh, nice screen, but it's slippery, the edges are sharp, so I almost dropped the wallet. So I realized this thing needs some kind of protection. So I said it needs a case. Well, obviously nobody was making the case. I said, you know what, I'm gonna make one. I'm branded under Crypto Chevy Wallet. So that's where the idea of accessories coming from. And after I made that one, I was extremely happy, even the, the founder of Ledger, Eric Lecheve, um, 
I give one to him. He was fascinated. He said, oh, this is something we need. Um, after that, and I came up with all the other accessories for the different wallets, Ledger Nano S and Trezor. We have some keychains, leather keychains for uh, digital bit boxes. You know, these accessories, not only did it add a layer of protection to your wallet, but it also gives you a much better user experience because you're touching a piece of leather. It's almost like you're touching real skin rather than a hard piece of plastic. Okay, so for, well, the, for the wallet choices, um, we have desktop wallets. That's what I'm gonna talk about, uh, 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 hardware wallet at last, but I wanna uh, show you all the wallet choices that we have. We have desktop wallet like Electrum. Uh, in the early days, we had Bitcoin Core wallet that you have to basically download the entire core, the blockchain in order to use the wallet. And uh, we have Armory, we have Copay. So those are the, some of the wallets that we used in the early days. We still, you can still use it today, and it's actually some people that run the full node, they need uh, to download the full Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, there are some advantages, but it certainly beats the purpose of convenience and even security sometimes if you don't know how to use it correctly. A web wallet is the next common one, which is the Coinbase, blockchain.info, btc.com. Most of these, I should not really categorize uh, Bitcoin.info into this because they are still somewhat give you a much more independence, allowing you to hold your uh, seeds. But the first one and the last one is more of a centralized server type of wallet. They also can act as a, uh, well, obviously we know Coinbase is an exchange. Uh, BTC.com is uh, owned by Bitmain. They basically, they control the private keys. You do not control the private keys. Um, if you don't own the keys, you don't own the wallet, uh, you don't own the coins. So those are some of the uh, disadvantages and obviously this also connected to the internet at all times when you're using it. Even though they require or they add some layer of security like a 2FA that sends you SMS or uh, using Google Authenticator to verify each time you log in and when you send. When you send in that request to transact, what they do is they verify, they validate you, they wanna see all the information that you send in, you are who you are before they actually initialize that real transaction on the first one, okay, Coinbase and BTC.com, not blockchain.info. Um, so let's move into mobile wallet. Mobile wallet we have, <clears throat> It's getting better, okay? So mobile wallet, at least all these, bread, bread wallet, you see the, we have the lanyard here, it's the bread wallet, there's a sponsor. A blockchain, actually there's a, there's a, actually there's a, t a typo, sorry. Copay, Bether, Mycelium, Jax, Airbits. So th all these wallets, you tend, you will be able to hold the, key, uh, the master seed where you're able to recover on a different device. You're in control yourself completely. If you lose the seeds, and then also you lose your phone or your phone is malfunctioning, you're not able to recover your fund. Because no one else, none of these uh, wallet uh, producers, or developers have access to what you have, because it's linked to a set of seeds. So these are even better compared to the last uh, two. In a sense, is as far as better control. 100% control. You bear 100% control of the responsibility, you bear 100% of control to transfer your fund. So the last one we wanna focus <clears throat> is a uh, hardware wallet. So you have Trezor from Czech Republic. They're the first ones that made hardware wallets. The founder is uh, Marak Slush. Uh, he is the uh, one of the main uh, Bitcoin core code contributor. He's the protocol for Bitcoin mining pool uh, developer. Many, many people today are using what he developed. Uh, we have Ledger from, uh, that's a company from France, Keep Key here in the US. Digital Bitbox is from France. And I know we're gonna have some players coming on this year, uh, which uh, we will uh, see if we're gonna carry if they get certified. Let's go into some uh, details. So the topic today is the advantages of using hardware wallet over other type of wallets. Hardware wallet consists of this software uh, that's open source that anybody can look on the GitHub in conjunction with this piece of device. Normally it's a USB. You can either use a, uh, a USB cable to connect to the USB port on the computer or some of the design is just a directly USB plug into the USB port. 
the security advantage on these is it isolates the uh, private key or the private key lives or embeds and never leaves on the, on the CPU of these wallets. So even though your wallet is connected to the internet, but the hacker will never be able to see that. The reason being, it does, the reason being is that's because it doesn't leave the chip. It's called an MCU microcontroller unit. So the private key will always stay on that. Even if the computer that you're using has a virus, has a Trojan horse, has a keylogger, they're not able to uh, abstract that private key. This is, this is why it makes it safe. At least your private key cannot be jeopardized by these uh, bad actors. Um, well, I already went, that, went through that point. It requires a physical confirmation before you're able to spend the money. So let's say you're trying to send uh, one Bitcoin. And then when you're sending that Bitcoin, you have to physically press one of the button on the hardware wallet. So let's give a scenario when there's a hacker who's trying to hack you. They actually got, managed to get on your computer. They see you open up your wallet. You're trying to send one Bitcoin to whatever address. Let's see, uh, you, you, you are still in control of that. Sometimes they are even able to replace that address to theirs, uh, which I'm going to go over in just a bit. And then before, you, before you're able to send, you have to physically press that button and say, I'm confirming this transaction. I'm sending it. So that hacker, even though they're on a computer, but they're physically still remote away from your computer. So they're not able to physically press that button. That's why it makes it safe. So that's one of the, one of the safety features. And of course, all the hardware wallet, um, all the information are very much encrypted. That's definitely another way to keep the, uh, the, uh, um, the transactions safe. All the software, like I said, are open source. Any experts feel free to uh, go on their GitHub to look at, dissect, uh, to look exactly what the source code is, to, uh, to make sure it's sound, it's safe. And then uh, also this supports, a lot of the hardware wallets nowadays supports um, multiple cryptocurrencies. Most of the major ones that we know today, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Zcash, Ethereum, Dash, uh, the ERC-20, probably 450 of those, and there will probably be more added. Pretty much all the major ones. Uh, with Ledger, they even support some of the uh, Stratus, some of the uh, proof-of-stake uh, cryptocurrencies. So there are probably, I would say, around uh, in upwards 400, close to 500 cryptocurrencies can be supported through these uh, hardware wallets. The last thing that's another security feature is the screen. So earlier I mentioned that if a hacker managed to get on your screen, and not only that they see your, the Bitcoin you're trying to transfer to, some, some of them are able to replace that address, that Bitcoin receiving address, with their own address, the hacker's address. So that independent screen will allow you to view on the screen to see if the address you're trying to send and the amount of Bitcoin you're trying to send is the same when you're looking on the computer. So let's say your computer has been compromised, but you're able to look at this small screen on the hardware wallet to see, oh, am I sending a one Bitcoin to this address? You want to verify the first five characters, the last five, to make sure. Or if you have time, you can verify the whole thing. Once you make sure you are sending to the right address the amount you intended to send, then you press send. And then that signs the transaction inside the wallet, and then uh, it uses a very simple um, form of protocol will send that signal back to the computer and let, uh, let the transaction go through and then validates it on the blockchain. Well, that's basically the, uh, the security features over the other wallets because uh, it is definitely isolates the private key. It has its independent verification screen. Um, so it's much, much safer to store cryptocurrency on these hardware wallets and transact with. Certainly, there is a drawback. It may not be as convenient as your mobile wallet because you never need to pull out this wallet and connect it to your phone and then transact that way. So what we suggest is that you keep a small amount of cryptocurrencies on your phone that you're able to or you're, uh, uh, you feel that you're, uh, you can afford to lose. But the majority amount, you want to keep it on a hardware wallet. 
And another tip I want to give is that when you're using these hardware wallets, you really want, especially at the time of setup, you really want to set up very carefully the master seeds that you're setting up, you're generating. You want to write down them correctly and, and verify correctly that you have written down correctly all those words and keep multiple copies at different places. In case of something happened to the wallet, at least you can go to that master seeds and get another wallet and recover. That's your last form of defense, last line of defense, your redundancy uh, procedure. So here comes why you want to buy from us. That's another security feature. I call it because you don't want to buy from a, a source that's not credible who can actually scam you, which we have heard uh, just not too long ago. The scammer had pulled out a really amazing scam. They sold a Ledger Nano S wallet along with a set of master seeds that they pre-generated, the wallet was totally authentic. They generated the seeds, they hide it on a, on a uh, piece of, uh, like, a, uh, like a lottery scratcher ticket and they sealed it. So the user thinks, oh, you know what, this, this has been sealed, nobody has seen. But see, the user didn't understand, didn't have the basic knowledge of the privacy must be generated on their own. You cannot use any seeds no matter who give it to you, even if Trezor or Ledger give it to you, don't trust them. This is a trustless system. You have to trust yourself, you can't trust them. Because the protocol that was made, BIP39, is to randomly generate these seeds. The wallet makers, they don't know. They, they cannot know. If they know, they can be corrupted and then try to steal these. So nobody should generate your seeds except yourself, and you have to be in full control of the seeds. You should be able to uh, get the seeds, access the seeds in case of your wallet is, is malfunctioning or in case of loss. I can give some tip, you can use this wisely, that when you're generating the seeds, you write down those 24 words, you probably don't want to write them down one to 24 straight out because if someone happened to see that seed, they will know that's the way they can recover. So what you can do is maybe you can be a little creative, say I'm going to move the first word to the last position, move the 24th word to the first position, so I, I mix the words. I camouflage this set of seeds. So even though I put it in pl uh, plain, anyone could see it, they'll try to use that order, they'll never be able to recover my seed. But you have to be able to remember what you have done because if you forget <laughs> that you're picking up a stone, smash your own feet. You don't want that have to happen. But you can be creative, you know, you can, you can uh, do some tricks. Write down what you have done. <laughs> never, never store your seeds online. Never take a picture of it. The manufacturer do not suggest you do that um, because that can be found by bad actors who will probably steal it. You will be amazed how many people will start generating these software and then looking for these 1824 pairs of seeds to see what they are. They're just going to use a computer, a program to test each one of these possible scenarios if they happen to find one, oh, they, they found one set of seats that has cryptocurrencies behind it, they'll take it. Because by the time that they find that, they are able to gain control of your wallet and they'll be able to steal your coins. So the reason why you should buy from us is because obviously we're a really credible seller. We've been very active in the community for the past year. We've been going to many, many conferences, spending a lot of money sponsoring these events. We believe that we are able to help the organizer to organize more type of events to allow more opportunities for us to gather together to exchange, learn, and share these resources and information. And we have good prices. Definitely, uh, we're in the States. Uh, so if you are actually buying in the US, you don't really have to go to Europe. <clears throat> and so, excuse me. You pay a little higher shipping price, probably takes a little longer, and then the biggest pain is when you're returning. That's the hardest, pro hardest part because you have to send it back to Europe. If you are returning with this, we're just in Southern California, it's much easier, a $3 first class mail will take care of that. We ship faster. Normally, we, our processing time is only one day. We have great customer service. We open our um, platform on Facebook. I know we may have delayed some emails because we have some uh, new employees. Uh, we also had an employee that left because of uh, maternity leave. But we try our best. We open our phone lines. Normally, none of the hardware wallet 
makers who will be able to open their phone lines. I can't possibly imagine how many phone calls they'll be able to get, or they'll be getting. The, the phone will always be busy, probably. But we open our phone lines, our phones, most, most of the time, you can get through. You can talk to us, um, small or simple, even to some extent, the technical question we'll be able to answer, help you to troubleshoot, <clears throat> help you to uh, set up your wallet that way. Easy return, easy refund, I mentioned that. And okay, so we have a global reseller affiliate program. We're looking for some uh, resellers in other parts of the world who can resell our uh, accessories to their local customers. It, it facilitates their, uh, their local customers at the same time they're able to make some profits. We offer corporate discounts on these wallets. For all the wallets, we're not able to offer you as a reseller, as an authorized reseller, because we're not those wallet makers, but we can only give them discounts. We can give you discounts. As we have communicated with the, with the uh, wallet makers, we are able to give discounts because we store enough inventory, and also we have a pretty decent discount on our own. So we try to give a, a higher, uh, or if you have buy a large wallet, we can try to give a higher discount than, than retail price. I mentioned those points. Um, so we also can do custom uh, logos for larger orders. Uh, if you guys need to purchase any large amount to do for marketing purpose for your IC or for whatever, there is a minimum requirement of a thousand units. Um, definitely all these uh, leather cases, we have discounts and as well as wallets. And we guarantee the authenticity and quality of our products. We stand 100% behind that. Okay, so as affiliate, so yeah, I should back up. Uh, we also offer affiliate program if you have a lot of traffic that, or you have a community who you are sharing these information with, um, feel free to sign up an affiliate program with us uh, where you can uh, get discounts for yourself, commission, as well as your customers. We are trying to put up a new website. Hopefully it will happen before April. The current website is a lot of functions that it doesn't have and then a lot of problems. Uh, hopefully we improve that. We'll give you a much better experience. Other than that, I'm done. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to take some questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It's Joseph Wang of Crypto HW Wallet. Yeah, um, so that, I don't know if the rest of people heard that question. Let me, okay, I'll repeat that question. So if Litecoin has a fork, will any of these wallets support that fork, basically get that free airdrop coin, right? That's your question. So as far as I heard, I know last year was the ICO year, also the IFO year, an initial fork <laughs> offering. <laughs> so we see a lot of uh, people fork off Bitcoin, uh, even Dash, even Ethereum, now they're going to do on Litecoin. So for these people behind these, uh, they're trying to obviously uh, form a community that they believe this uh, could be a better improvement for these this, these cryptocurrencies. I have not heard from any of these wallet makers say that they're going to support. They don't like to because it's a lot of resources for them. They need to put uh, developers and engineers to come out with a solution that they have to make sure that it's safe and sound because their reputation is down the line. If they're going to support something, it better be safe and sound. But if you see more exchanges and a more credible uh, entities that start supporting these forks, and maybe the wallets may follow. I'm not the wallet maker, so I can't really promise what they say, but as far as I heard, uh, it's not likely, especially like when it's not really that heavyweight. So. If you have any more uh, questions, feel free to um, come on up to the front and, and talk with Joseph. Otherwise, we're getting ready for our next talk, so we'll see you back here in a few minutes.